All right. Well, it's my privilege again this evening to preach a sermon. I'm going to preach another hymn sermon. The last thing we did would be a good one to do one on. It's a really good one. And it kind of does tie into the one I selected for this evening, though. And so let's start it out this way. This hymn was written in 1900, so it's another old one. And the story goes like this. Does life ever become difficult for you? Are there times when you think you can bear it no more? When the hurricanes of this world come and the devastation they bring tears you down, do you ever feel all alone with your cares and your problems? Well, Pastor Frank Grafe did, but out of his despair came a song that has encouraged many thousands since its writing in 1900. Now, Pastor Greff had gone through a deep and heartbreaking experience. He was to say later, my whole attitude had become one of despair and defeat, and because of this, I was living a life of unhappiness and failure. With each passing day, I fell deeper and deeper into that slow of despair until finally I felt I could stand it no longer. And it was at this point in his life that Pastor Graff did something to lift his spirits. The good pastor began to sing a hymn, a hymn that had been born out of a sad experience too, What a Friend We Have in Jesus. Now, I had preached a sermon not too long ago on What a Friend We Have in Jesus. And it was uh, a tragic circumstance that, that brought that song to be. If you recall, Joseph Scriven's uh, first fiance died and a tragic drowning accident the day before their wedding. And then he had another fiance, his second fiance died before their wedding could take place too. So he lost two fiances, poor fella. If I was his next girlfriend, I would have said, we're not getting engaged. Uh, it did not work out well for them. About the same time though that his second fiance died, Joseph received word from Ireland that his mother was ill. He could not go to be with her, so he wrote a letter of comfort and enclosed one of his poems entitled, what a friend we have in Jesus. Now back to Pastor Griff. What happened next doesn't surprise anyone because the Bible says to encourage one another by speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. And that's in Ephesians 5:19. So this time I'd like to have the ladies play a verse and chorus of this particular song. Thank you, ladies. Joshua, I got my box of Kleenex ready. Thank you very much. Appreciate it, ladies. Good to see you. Anybody know the name of that song? Yes, Jesus cared. Well, the Lord did speak to Pastor Graff through that hymn, What a Friend We Have in Jesus, and his heart was filled with joy and speak of him full of glory. And from that experience, the pastor has claimed, I know he cares. I know my Savior cares. And then the Lord gave him a new song, the song entitled, Does Jesus Care? So, if you're able, stand with me and open your Bible to 2 Corinthians chapter 1, and we'll start with verse 3. 2 Corinthians chapter 1, and we're going to read verses 3 through 7. 2 Corinthians chapter 1, and let's read 3 through 7. I can't see. 2 Corinthians 1, 3 through 7. Blessed be God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and the God of all comfort, who comforteth us in all our tribulation, that we may be able to comfort them which are in any trouble by the comfort wherewith we ourselves are comforted of God. For as the sufferings of Christ abound in us, so our consolation also aboundeth by Christ. 
And whether we be afflicted, it is for your consolation and salvation, which is effectual in the enduring of the same sufferings which we also suffer, or whether we be comforted, it is for your consolation and salvation. And our hope of you is steadfast, knowing that as ye are partakers of the sufferings, so shall ye be also of the consolation. The title of this sermon is, Does Jesus Care? Let's pray. We thank you, Lord, that you do care. And we thank you, Lord, that you know that we go through sufferings and uh, we go through trials. And oftentimes they're painful and they're hurtful and they make us sad. But you allow us to go through these trials and sufferings for one, that you may be glorified, but also that we may better help others that go through similar circumstances. And we pray, Lord, that we will be allowed to do that, that we are not short-sighted and we just focus on ourselves, but we focus on the bigger picture that you work through your people, you work through us to minister to others and help us, Lord, to be willing participants in that and give you the glory for it. And we ask these things in your name. Amen. You may be seated. Well, have you ever wondered, why does God allow me to suffer? Doesn't God care about me? Well, I believe the answer to that question is partly this. God allows us to suffer so that we can help those who will suffer in the same way. Just let everybody get in and get situated. All right, the sermon this evening has four points. And the first one is this. Jesus cares when our heart is hurting. Jesus cares when our heart is hurting. Now, the first verse in the course of the hymn, and it's found on page 243, if you want to follow along in your hymnal, goes like this. Does Jesus care when my heart is pained too deeply for mirth and song? As the burdens press and the cares distress and the way grows weary and long... Oh, yes, he cares. I know he cares. His heart is touched with my grief. When the days are weary, the long nights dreary, I know my Savior cares. Well, I believe the Apostle Paul knew what it was like to hurt. And if you refer back to verse 4 of our text, it says, Who comforteth us in all our tribulation, that we may be able to comfort them which are in any trouble by the comfort wherewith we ourselves are comforted of God. Now, suffering in this life can feel like it's meaningless, and we may ask God, why me? You know, what did I do to deserve the suffering? Why, why me? And there's no answer for that other than that God knows, and God allowed it to happen. Fortunately, we have the Word of God to help us there a little bit, and it says that our suffering has a purpose, and we can be comforted by God. He is there for us, and we can be comforted by God so that we also have opportunity to comfort others, to pass that along to others who are suffering. You know what the difference between sympathy and empathy is? What's the difference? Anybody want to tell me real fast the difference between sympathy and empathy? Sympathy is feeling something for someone, but empathy means that you know what that person, you know what that person is feeling because you've done it yourself. So to empathize with somebody, you know how they feel, right? Sympathy means you, you can feel sorry for them. But when you empathize with somebody, you know how they're feeling. And when God allows you to go through suffering, then when you, that same person then you run across, somebody else runs across that same similar trial, you can empathize with them. And there's, there's a myriad of things that, that you could help people out uh, by doing that. Well, who's better able to express how God comforted them in a similar movement than someone who has walked the same path? I'm convinced Jesus cares for us when we're hurting, and he allows us to go through pain so that we can help others in their trials. Jesus does care. The second point is this. Jesus cares when we are surrounded by darkness and are afraid. Jesus cares when we are surrounded by darkness and are afraid. Five-year-old Johnny was in the kitchen as his mother made supper, and she asked him to go into the pantry and get her a can of tomato soup. But he didn't want to go into the pantry alone. It's dark in there, and I'm scared. Well, she asked him again, and he persisted. Finally, she said, 
It's okay. Jesus will be in there with you. Johnny walked hesitantly to the door, slowly opened it. He peeked inside, saw that it was dark. He started to leave when all of a sudden an idea came to him and he said, Jesus, if you're in there, would you hand me that can of tomato soup? <laughs> I can relate. I don't like the darkness either. And I'm sure there were more than one spider in there too. <laughs> yeah. So the second verse of the hymn goes like this. Does Jesus care when my way is dark with a nameless dread and fear? As the daylight fades into deep night shades, does he care enough to be near? So we talked about Paul. Now let's talk about King David. I believe King David knew what it was like to face uncertainty. David said in the Psalm 23, verse 4, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. You know, David was often concerned for his safety, but he knew God was protecting him. You know, David could walk through a dark valley, perhaps even the valley of death, fearlessly because the Lord walked with him. You know, strangely enough, it seems that the shadow of death drew David closer to the Lord. And it shouldn't, be, that, shouldn't it be that way with us, too? You know, God promised to be with us always in Matthew 28, 20. Teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. You know, we need to draw closer to Jesus when we're going through those valleys. I'm convinced Jesus cares when we are surrounded by darkness and are afraid. Now, the third point is this. Jesus cares when we fall, when we fail to resist temptation. Jesus cares when we fail to resist temptation. You know, it's been said that when we see a brother or sister in sin, that there are two things that we do not know. First, we do not know how hard he or she tried not to sin. And second, we do not know the power of the forces that tempted, tempted him or her. We also do not know what we would have done in the same circumstances. So don't be so quick to judge a brother or sister that falls into sin. The third verse goes like this. Does Jesus care when I've tried and failed to resist some temptation strong? When for my deep grief I find no relief, though tears flow all the night long. Well, when we fail, and if we're human, and we are, we surely are going to fail. We don't have to stay defeated. We don't have to stay defeated. The Apostle John said in 1 John 1, 9, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So the commitment of a sin affects our relationship with God. And as God convicts us of that sin that is hindering our fellowship with him, we must confess it, receive forgiveness, and cleansing for our relationship with God to be restored and to continue without hindrance. I'm convinced that Jesus cares when we fail to resist temptation because it harms our relationship with him, and Jesus wants a close relationship with us. And now the fourth and final point is this. Jesus cares when we grieve the loss of a loved one. This illustration is going to be hard. But a little girl came home from a neighbor's house where her little friend had died. Why did you go, questioned her father, to comfort her mother, said the child. Well, what could you do to comfort her? I climbed into her lap and cried with her. Ah. I'm sorry. Well, the course of this hymn goes like this. The verse, of course, I got a nosebleed, sorry. Uh, I'll be all right. Does Jesus care when I've said goodbye to the dearest on earth to me? And my sad heart aches till it nearly breaks. Is it aught to him does he see? It's a good thing I got the Kleenex here. Jesus knows how we feel when we've lost a friend or a loved one. I'm sorry. Recall how Jesus responded when he saw how distraught Mary was at Lazarus' death in John 11, 32 to 35. Then when Mary was come 
Where Jesus was and saw him, she fell down at his feet, saying unto him, Lord, if thou hadst been here, my brother had not died. When Jesus therefore saw, fear, uh, saw her weeping, and the Jews also weeping which came with her, he groaned in the spirit and was troubled, and said, Where have ye laid him? They said unto him, Lord, come and see. And then Jesus wept. In this passage, Jesus knows he is going to raise Lazarus, but he still feels compassion for Mary and the Jews that were there crying over Lazarus. That feeling was strong enough to produce his own tears. The fact that Jesus weeps in this situation brings context to human pain and suffering. Does Jesus care? Well, this simple statement says it all. Jesus wept. That proves that he does care. I'm convinced Jesus cares when we grieve the loss of a loved one because he felt the same way himself about Lazarus. I'd like to summarize this sermon with a passage from 1 Peter. If you will turn to 1 Peter chapter 5, let's read verses 6 and 7. 1 Peter chapter 5, verses 6 and 7. 1 Peter chapter 5, verses 6 and 7. It says, Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time. And verse 7 says, Casting all your care upon him, for he careth for you. So when you are at your lowest, when you think no one cares, you may even ask, does Jesus care? I respectfully submit to you. Oh, yes, he cares. I know he cares. As our musicians come forward, let's all stand together, heads bowed, eyes closed. Now let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for this, this short, simple sermon tonight. Asking the simple question, do you care? And we know you care. We know you care. When life throws us curveballs, when life hits us in the head, when bad things happen and we don't understand, we know that you care. And you allow these things to happen to us, Lord, so that you can be glorified and that we can help someone else through that experience and help us sort of do exactly that. We know you care, Lord. We know you do, and we're thankful for it. We ask these things in your precious name. Amen.